Uh, that's true in theory. However, there's a contingency plan for the uh, collapse of the currency, and it's called the emergency powers. I don't know if you've paid attention to that or not. A little bit, yeah. Why don't you talk about that? Um, well, it turns out that uh, when uh, Roosevelt um, was uh, inaugurated, uh, in his inaugural speech, this was on March 4th, 1933, he says to the country that he's going to ask the Congress, his words, for the one extraordinary power as if we had been invaded by a foreign foe. He's talking about uh, the commander-in-chief power over the whole country. And on March 9th, they gave it to him in something that's euphemistically called the uh, Banking Act of 1933. And basically what they did is they declared an emergency and they gave him plenty potentiary power. I mean, pretty much to do what he wants, irrespective of the Constitution. They were essentially dictatorial power? Do whatever he wants, really. And uh, so, for example, when he interned the Japanese during World War II, there was no uh, congressional law passed on that. That was just an executive order pursuant to his emergency powers. When President Nixon uh, defaulted on the uh, redeemability of gold in 1971, uh, he did it pursuant to his emergency powers. At the same time, uh, you'll recall that he instituted wage and price controls, again, pursuant to his emergency powers. Uh, in 1973, uh, Frank Church, who then headed the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, said, look, 40 years have gone by. The emergency must be over. Let's get rid of the emergency powers. And they couldn't even identify all of the supporting legislation that had been passed in the interim uh, in, in uh, augmenting these emergency powers. There's something like 450 uh, laws that they identified, which, by the way, give the president the power to seize the communication system. I mean, like they did, you know, in these other countries, uh, you, know, uh, you know, close down the internet, for example, seize the transportation system, seize the fuel system. I mean, do, do whatever they want. The confiscation of gold in 1933 was under this Emergency Powers Act? That was uh, his, his freezing it, you know, which was ratified on March 9th. They retroactively uh, gave approval to everything he did. Before they actually, before he had the... They weren't supposed to do that. It was ex post facto, not supposed to do that. But uh, basically, they allow the president to do anything he wants. Uh, just before uh, uh, Bush uh, two left office on the White House website, I downloaded it. I don't know if it's still there. There was a national uh, security, homeland security, something uh, 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 order. I have the full text, which in the event of an emergency or a catastrophe is the words they used, uh, the, uh, the president could de, de facto seize the whole government. Forget about the Supreme Court, forget about the Congress. And when you think catastrophe, you think maybe Katrina, you think maybe a meteor hitting the country. Well, they listed a whole bunch of catastrophes, and one of the ones mentioned was that if people lose confidence in the financial system. Hmm. That's very interesting. I wasn't aware of that. So really what we're talking about uh, is martial law. Mm -hmm. And uh, interestingly, uh, as the financial system was collapsing in uh, 2008, and Hank Paulson and the rest of these guys, um, you know, they went to the Congress, they said, you have to give us this ability uh, to put out $700 billion, remember that, the two-pager? Yes. And they, the said, bazooka. they said, otherwise we could have martial law. Well, that's right. And so when you talk about people, you know, coming out okay, uh, you know, once martial law is instituted, you don't know how it comes out. And one of the downsides is that um, when people gain power, they don't voluntarily give it up. I mean, this is something that uh, Dr. Vieira is concerned about, and he would like to revive the, the militia. I mean, you really do need some way to protect yourself because who knows how this could play out. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, it's not necessarily true that you're safe, you know, in the event that you have gold or whatever. Uh, everything could be reshuffled. And as bad as this is uh, in the United States, it is much worse in other countries. I mean, I think, James, that the euro is going to collapse way before the dollar collapses. Yeah, it seems like, uh, you know, it's a horse race as to which one is going to get to the glue factory first. I think, it's, I think it's the euro, and they have nothing going for them. If you take a country like Spain, they have no industry in Spain. How can they earn their debts? I mean, the only industry they had was home building. And that's that is done now, not going to Just like Ireland. They've Just got so like many Ireland. extra homes, how are they ever going to repay that? In Ireland, you had some manufacturing. Greece has no economy whatsoever. Except tourism, and with the high euro, it's relatively expensive for tourists to go there. And also, uh, they have riots. Mm -hmm. I mean, interestingly about Greece, this country has, on a percentage basis, more expatriates than any other country on the planet. And I've, I've been to Greece maybe half a dozen times, and every time I go, I notice... Um, uh, the plane is uh, 
sort of empty going over there, and it's full coming home. <laughs> and you can't, you can't make a living there. I mean, there's so many regulations, and the money's no good. You know? yeah. So uh, that, by the way, when the Euro, uh, given that the euro collapses first, uh, for short term, it's bearish for the dollar, because there will be a, uh, a rush into the so-called safe haven, which is not safe, as, as we know. The only safe haven being gold and silver. That, that, is, that is the real safety. Yeah. And uh, interestingly, uh, you know, I have uh, uh, my significant others, uh, Chinese girls, just came back from China. Uh, the Chinese government has made it official government policy to promote ordinary people to buy gold. Official government policy to, make, to promote ordinary people to buy gold. And they have a lot of money over there. Yeah. So here in the United States, you know, I've been talking about this for a long time, and people say to me, well, how can I buy gold? I mean, where do I get it? You know, it's, it's kind of, I mean, the distribution channel is opaque at best. And I'm not talking about a GLD or some you know, paper ticket. I'm talking about getting the gold. It's hard to get. In China, you can walk into any major bank and walk out with gold. Mm. And these banks are owned by the government, so this is government policy. And they promote it on the Chinese websites, not the American, not the English websites, but on the Chinese websites, they're promoting bars, they're promoting coins.